The Wakoit Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, located on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, is currently leading a three-year research project entitled Bringing Wetlands to Market. Members of the project team are working together to learn more about how coastal wetlands store carbon and other greenhouse gases, and to predict carbon fluxes across the range of environmental settings. Natural carbon storage is being looked at as one important way of reducing the surplus of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere due to the burning of fossil fuels. While it is well known that forests store large amounts of carbon from greenhouse gases, research indicates that coastal wetlands might capture and store carbon at rates three to five times greater than forest ecosystems. This project is important because it will provide the science and tools necessary to quantify and value this important ecological service provided by wetlands and link this knowledge to conservation and management actions. So the main purpose of this uh, science collaborative bringing wetlands to market project is to get a better understanding of how greenhouse gases behave in salt marshes and the effect that nitrogen has on that and use that information to develop what's called a methodology or kind of the um, the guiding principles to bring salt marshes into carbon markets and it will also produce a user-friendly model for towns, uh, project developers, etc. so that they can pretty easily estimate how much carbon a salt marsh will sequester, will store. And um, one of the reasons that we want to link those two things is that we see this as a potential funding mechanism for, um, for preserving or restoring salt marshes. Um, you know, there's tons of them out there that need to be, need to be either restored or preserved and um, not anywhere near enough funding to, to do that. And so this is one way of potentially bridging that gap. In parts of the world where uh, a carbon market exists, where there's a cap and trade type system, uh, greenhouse gas emitters, um, as part of reaching their, um, their targets for reductions of emissions, they can um, pay to have someone else in any part of the world preserve forests or restore forests as a, as a carbon sink. And so our goal here is to conduct the science and support model and methodology development such that um, wetlands can be introduced into carbon markets as well. Yeah, we're interested in carbon storage uh, because um, increasing uh, carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere are leading to uh, climate change. We have increased um, atmospheric CO2 concentrations by burning fuels. Another important source of carbon dioxide has been changes in land use and, and, cha and land management, including deforestation, tilling of soils, and destruction of wetlands. And so the concept is that, um, you know, we need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but we may be able to, in addition to that, manage uh, ecosystems such that they store carbon better um, at a faster rate and that we preserve uh, existing carbon stocks in, in ecosystems. Salt marshes have tremendous capacity to sequester CO2. However, we don't fully understand what best promotes and maximizes that sequestration and are there in fact processes and human impacts that might be contributing to the release of greenhouse gases. There is growing recognition that nutrient loading and nitrogen from human sources uh, through runoff and agricultural fertilization is reaching the coast and that that's promoting eutrophication, which is the um, depletion of oxygen and the uh, production of too much organic matter that can occur in coastal estuaries. With increasing nitrogen availability, uh, microorganisms uh, may tend to produce greater quantities of nitrous oxide. It's very potent on a per molecule basis. It's about 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide. And so if we um, add nitrogen to the system, we may increase nitrous oxide uh, production. The other reason it's important is because increasing nitrogen availability may affect the ability of salt marshes to store carbon. Uh, in two ways. It may uh, reduce the amount of, of root uh, production below the soil zone and um, it may increase the rate of microbial activity which leads to greater um, respiration in the soil and uh, thereby liberating CO2 back to the atmosphere.
broadly, the most important uh, questions that we want to answer are um, what are the current rates of storage of carbon in uh, coastal wetlands? What are the stocks that currently exist in the soils? And how do those um, rates of storage vary with uh, changes in nitrogen load, with changes in salinity, with changes in plant composition, with changes in uh, elevation of the soil uh, relative to sea level? And so we're investigating that um, by measuring both the, the vertical exchanges of gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, between the atmosphere and the surface of the marsh across tidal, diurnal, seasonal, and annual cycles. Um, and in addition to that, we, we, to, in order to have complete budgets of, of carbon and greenhouse gases, we need to know how much of these materials are being exchanged between the adjacent estuary and the salt marsh. So at the mouths of each of these creeks, we're um, making uh, continuous measurements of exchanges of the greenhouse gases and of various forms of carbon and nitrogen between salt marsh and estuary. I see this as a way to communicate in a more comprehensive way the ecosystem services that, that coastal wetlands play. And so people may already be aware of, of some of the ecosystem services, such as um, protection from, from storms and erosion, removal of nutrients and sediment, habitat for a variety of animals. And so we want to add to that list um, the carbon storage benefit, which interacts with climate, to the list of, of considerations when managing uh, coastal ecosystems. Secondly, we want to make explicit the linkages between um, management of estuaries management of, of wetlands, management of the nitrogen cycle and nitrogen inputs uh, to coastal ecosystems, and the carbon cycle, and, and finally climate change. You know, third, we want to provide the science and a model and a methodology or protocol that will um, facilitate the introduction of wetlands to carbon markets. One of the things that has been strongly emphasized um, from the beginning of this project and an element that makes it um, very different from traditional research projects is the collaborative component. Both the funders as well as this project team has placed a strong emphasis on really trying to bring together the scientists it, with the intended users to be able to collaboratively develop the project as well as continue that dialogue throughout the project so that at the end of the day you will have results that are more targeted and more relevant to the users who we hope will apply it in their work. And this group we see would involve entities like state agencies, towns who are looking um, to look at restoration management options as well as nitrogen management options, groups like the Nature Conservancy or other land management groups, other project developers who are trying to develop projects to either conserve or restore wetlands. Empirical studies over decades have shown what really gets science to be used is when it's credible, people think it's technically adequate, but it's relevant to their particular situation. And third, it's legitimate, which means people feel like they've been part of the process.